Welcome to the Ride stops on today's tour. We deliver a few of the great locations we visited and have earned some high marks for their hospitality. We showcase one of the founding members of the Jump and Bump Sport of Snowcross. And we hit you hard with an exclusive story and an emotional accounting of a couple of riders who lost a buddy in an avalanche. This is STV. It's all good. Let's roll. STV is sponsored by Camoplast, Ice Tech pre studded track. By Ski Doo, there's nothing like it. And by Carlisle Ultimax XS snowmobile belts. STV has traveled many miles in many places. Here's a sampling of some of the best hospitality that gets scored with high marks. While traveling in Newfoundland in April, the crew was treated to an awesome session of spring riding, which at times included some t-shirt spins across the valleys in Gros Morne National Park. But what really stood out was the welcome reception we received from the townsfolk, who put on a killer potluck dinner for us and arranged some way too funny entertainment. And of course, in true Newfie style, we were officially screeched in as honorary Newfoundlanders. Too much fun on the rock. Okay, don't ever let looks deceive you. While spinning the tracks on the train tour in Northern Ontario, we came through the village of Hawk Junction. A blink and it's gone, with the exception of the parking lot full of sleds that captured our eye. Some might think more sleds than population, and you'll understand why when you get introduced to the teddy bear burger. This is a stir fry piled on a pound of burg, overflowing a bun. Definitely a contender in any burger battle anywhere. You'll be setting the suspension to soft after this mow down. Hard to argue when you are swept off into the backcountry to a retreat that once served as a meeting place for presidents, prime ministers, and other dignitaries. This incredible log cabin estate is located outside of Robinami, Finland, and is loaded with understated hospitality. Comfy, cozy, and inviting. So much so, it calls for the polar bear dip after the sauna. But standing out was this massive open fireplace, which had fresh salmon on cedar planks simmering away as the main course of a meal fit for a king. After this experience, the crew all agreed it would be good to be the king. Okay, this may not be everyone's cup of tea. In fact, not even close to tea is this hooch. How about a sour toe cocktail? During our trek over the top, Alaska to Dawson City Yukon tour, the crew once again were the targets of those nasty initiation recruiters. In full Klondike style, with the sled long ago parked, the locals welcomed us in a big way. With the help of a toe dropped into a shot of your preferred libation and a quick snapback, we were the newest members of the Sour Toe Cocktail Club. Can you imagine? Over 10,000 are actually part of this digit swilling brotherhood. Yikes, wasn't that a party? Here's a helpful tip. If you have a bent brake lever, it isn't necessarily garbage. All it takes is a torch and a few minutes of your time. Here's what it's supposed to look like. The handle where you grab it with your left hand to pull in the clutch is supposed to be straight in through here. And this one fell over and it just got curled over. The most critical part in straightening something like this is getting the heat in the right spot. And right now it's fairly sturdy. But what I'm going to do is I want it to uh, I want it to curl right where I'm putting the heat. I never hold the heat in one spot too long because what's going to happen is it'll just drip like solder on the floor. And we don't want that. There we go. That's about what I want right there. One finger. Very soft. Another thing too is you always leave that on its own. You never throw it in the water, let it cool off. You don't even blow air on it. Just let it cool naturally. And it'll be uh, just as strong as it was before it fell over. So we're all set to go. 
an important note, if there is any indication of a crack in the lever, no matter how small, don't straighten it, replace it. Have your say. Well, from oh, the early 60s where there was over 100 manufacturers to now down to just a handful, uh, they've progressed a lot, putting fuel injection into their sleds. Uh, the four-stroke industry has come up even with the two-stroke and how fuel efficient as also uh, environmentally friendly they've become. Uh, they have just evolved incredibly. Been there, done it, and still going when STV returns.